You've watched Star Wars, right? Is that, is that still a thing with the starring and the warring? Anyway, there's this classic scene where the Death Star sidles up to Alderaan and it's like, hey, planetoid, you're looking mighty fine tonight. And then it fires up the super laser and destroys the entire orb in a single blast. Boom! Well, shortly followed by some collective group screaming on the interstellar Forceway radio. This is generally described as science fiction. When you're making up stories, anything you like can happen in them. George Lucas's hunger for your childhood toy money wasn't hampered by the pesky constraints of physics in any meaningful way. Well, here at the Guide to Space, we get to take our own flights of fancy and pointlessly speculate for your amusement. That's our job. Well, that and snark. So let's consider what it would actually take to destroy a planet with a pew pew style laser beam. And what kinds of energy would need to be harnessed in a fully armed and operational battle station? Let's go back and carefully review our evidence. Death Star drifts in, charges up all its lasers into a super laser blast focused on Alderaan. The planet then detonates and chunks fly off in every direction, just like the pie eating contest in Stand By Me. What we saw was every part of Alderaan given enough of a kick so that it was traveling at escape velocity from every other part of the planet. And if the Death Star hadn't delivered enough explosive energy, the planet might have fluffed up for a moment and then the collective gravity would suck it all back in together. And then the slightly rearranged and likely now uninhabited planet would continue orbiting its star. So you can imagine doing this the slow way. Take each continent on Alderaan, load it up into a rocket and blast that rocket off into space as though we're on an escape trajectory from the planet. Sure, you'd need an incomprehensible number of rocket launches to get that material off the planet. But hey, uh, midichlorians, blue finger lightning and ESP. Fortunately, as you carted away more and more of the busted up rock, it would have less mutual gravity. And so the rocket launches would require less and less energy to get the job done. And eventually, you'd just be left with one last chunk of rock that you could just force ninja kick into the neighboring star. So how much energy is that going to take? Well, there's an easy calculation you can make. The energy you'd need is equal to three times the gravitational constant times the mass of the planet squared divided by five times the planet's radius. So do this math for an Earth-sized mass world. And let's see, that's, uh, that's 2 and 1, carry the 5. And you get 2 times 10 to the 36 joules. That's a 2 followed by 36 zeros in joules. Is that a lot? Sounds like a lot. Well, our own sun puts out 3 times 10 to the 26 joules per second. So if you poured all the energy from the sun into the task of tearing apart the earth, it wouldn't have the energy to do it. In fact, you need to focus the light of the sun for a full week to get the level of planet destruction done. And according to ancient Star Warsian dork scholars, the Death Star, Solus Mortis, is powered by a hyperreactor with the output of multiple main sequence stars. So there you go, problem solved. It's the size of a small moon, but it's more powerful than many stars. So of course it can destroy a planet. The Death Star clearly destroyed Alderaan. We watched it explode. I saw it. You saw it. We heard the screams of millions of souls cry out. It happened. But what if it wasn't a beam thingy? Our math is good, but clearly we're not enlightened enough to comprehend the true wisdom hidden within the Lucasian scriptures. Perhaps the Death Star's super laser was just a targeting laser, directing the placement of a gigantic antimatter bomb. Now, according to Ethan Siegel from Starts With a Bang, you'd only need 1.24 trillion tons of antimatter. Imagine you made a bomb out of that much antimatter iron, if that's even a thing. You'd only need a sphere about three kilometers across. And if the Death Star is 150 kilometers across or so, they could carry a bunch of these. Very carefully, like super carefully. Okay, maybe a good idea if 
if everybody took off their boots and made sure they only talked with their inside voices. Now, obviously, Star Wars is a story, so anything, anything can happen. The future is unknown, and we might discover all kinds of weirdo physics and harness them into all kinds of powerful weapons. I'm only suggesting that a space station capable of deploying a week's worth of solar energy in a single second might be a stretch. And maybe, George, if you've just done a little back of the napkin math, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. Also, maybe no Ewoks. I'm just saying. So where do you stand on the feasibility of imaginary space station weaponry? How big a planet can your imagination destroy? Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. We'd like to thank Eddie Ekpanya and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, contests, extras, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. What we saw was every part of Alderaan given enough of a kick so that it was traveling at sk do you want me to do this one? No, yeah, no I got it. <laughs> Said I could do one. You can tell it. Why don't we wrap it up and then you can do this one? No, sir. <laughs>